Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to request some data from Flickr and then convert the blob of JSON we get back into a view model ready for Knockout to manage for us. We'll need to make an AJAX request to Flickr's API to get the initial data and we'll need to use a specific URL in order to do this. So first of all we can add a simple method that constructs and returns this URL for us. So this method will be called build request URL. So first of all, we need to add this to our variable declaration at the top here. And then we can add the method itself after our add window handler method. So first of all, we want to set a local reference to the options object. We do this just for convenience. And next, we just need to construct and return the URL. We'll do this using the array.join technique because it's much faster than regular string concatenation and that's basically what we're doing here. So the first part of the URL will be the base, which we defined as one of the options of the defaults object and that then becomes part of the options object. So we can say o.base and that will give us this first part of the URL. So next we want to set the method of Flickr's API that we want to use. And we can also get this from the options and it will be under a key called method. So we'll add this when we actually make the request. Next we need to specify the photo set ID. And this will be one of the options called photo set ID. So that's one that's passed into the constructor as part of the configuration object. And lastly, we need to add our API key. And this will be under the options object in the key API key. And again, this is something that's passed into our constructor as part of the config and is then extended into the options object. So all this method does is retrieve the options object and save it to a local variable for convenience and then returns a string using the array.join technique. The items in the array that we join in return are a mixture of the fixed strings that stay the same for each request and the values from various properties of the options object, such as the method name, the photo set ID, and the API key. These are all required by Flickr's API. So now we're ready to actually request some data. We can do this using a public method so that data can be retrieved at any time. So adding a public method is easy. We just attach the method to the instance returned by the constructor. So we'll get the photo set details first of all. So this method is called get photo set details. It's attached to the photo app instance and so will be a public method. Inside the function, we just need to set the method name that the request will use. So this is the method on Flickr's API, by the way, not one of our own methods. And then we can just use jQuery's Ajax method to actually make the request. And to get the URL for the request, which is required by the Ajax method, we can use the build request URL method that we just added. Regular jQuery users will know that the Ajax method can take other arguments, such as a configuration object to configure the request. We don't need to use this argument here, so we'll just pass in the URL to use. So we want to actually make this request during the initialization for our application. So we can simply invoke the method inside the immediately invoked function we added in the last lesson. So we'll get rid of that console log statement as well. So at this point, our application should initialize, add a function to the global window object and make a request to Flickr's API. We're going to be creating a basic view model and for easy access, we'll store this as a property of our application. To set this up, we just want to add this to the init function. So we can do this after we set the options up here 
and we can just say that dot view model equals a simple object literal. So our view model at this point will have just two properties, a title and a description, which will be the title and description of the photo set that we're working with. The values of these properties will be special knockout constructs. So we use the KO object, which knockout.js will create for us automatically. And we say that this property is an observable property. And what that means is that Knockout will observe this property while our application is running. And every time the property changes, Knockout will automatically notify the bits of our UI that are mapped to this property. So we don't have any UI yet, and we don't have any data for this property yet. So we just set it as an observable and we don't pass any data into it. We can do that shortly once we actually get some data. And we'll also add a desk property for the description, and this will also be an observable. So in the last lesson, we added a mapping to allow the global JSON Flickr API function to call private methods within our application. These methods are called handle details and handle photos. And we added the names to our top level variable declaration. And what we can do is just add the first one of these now. So we'll do that up here and it's called handle details. And this function will receive the data that is returned by Flickr. And we can now set these observable properties that are part of our view model. So when we want to set a knockout observable property, we need to treat it as a function and invoke it and pass it the data that we want to set. So the first one's called title. So we treat it as a function and invoke it, and we pass it the value that we'd like to set. So this will be part of the data that's returned to us by Flickr. And that will be in an object called data, which is passed to the method. And then the first property is called photo set. And we want the title. And this is actually in a property within title called underscore content. So this is something that's created by Flickr. We have no control of it, but that's the property that we need to get. And we can also do the same thing to get the description. Okay, great. So this should be all we need at this point. Uh, we should now be able to log one of these properties. So let's try that. So because the property of our view model that we're getting is an observable, we need to invoke it to get the value. And if we invoke it without passing a value into it, then it will give us the data that it contains. So let's just run this in our browser now and check that everything's working as expected. So we're not seeing the console log statement. Let's just see if the request is being made first of all. So we can see the request is being made and we have a response. So that, that part is working correctly at least. So let's try adding a console log inside our window object and just see what data we've got. We'll just check that we're actually getting a response. Okay, so we are getting the data object. So the photo set ID doesn't seem to equal the ID that's returned. I can see why that is. It looks like there's a typo. So my fault there. So let's see if that's fixed things. Do we still have our console log down here? We do. Okay, great. So we're getting the title of the photo set. So everything so far is working as expected. Wonderful. So in this lesson, we created a basic view model and populated it with some data from the request that we made to Flickr. As you can see, a view model is nothing more complex than a simple JavaScript object with functions as properties. 
We also looked at observables and saw how we can get data from them by invoking them with no parameters, or add data to them by invoking them and passing the data to set as a parameter. Observables are a central feature of Knockout, and we'll be using them throughout the remainder of the course. In the next lesson, we can learn how to map this data to elements on the page using simple bindings. Thanks for watching.